Hello, my name is Rebecca Brookhauser, and today I have with me a couple of my favorite personal injury attorneys here in Missouri. Spencer Ferris of the S.E. Ferris Law Firm in St. Louis, and in Kansas City, Jason Pottinger of the Pottinger Law Firm, and Scott Wilson in Columbia of the Hines and Wilson Law Firm. And today, we are, of course, talking about personal injury, the legal process, and some of the biggest issues in law today. But before we get started, why don't each one of you tell us just a little bit about yourself, your practice, and why you do what you do? Mr. Ferris? Well, I uh, practice law in um, St. Louis, as Ms. Brookhauser said, uh, representing injury victims and also folks with insurance claims. Um, my law firm has my name on it, which means I'm unemployed with overhead, and I can take the cases and represent the folks that I want to represent. Um, not folks that I have to represent. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Pottinger. Yep, my name is Jason Pottinger. I am a, a principal of the Pottinger Law Firm in Kansas City. And like Spencer, I am a solo practitioner, which means that I get to pick my clients. I get to pick my cases. I myself work on every case. And uh, that's one of the things that keeps me invigorated as a lawyer, is having ongoing relationships with clients and former clients. Fantastic. And Mr. Wilson, how about for you? Yes, I am Scott Wilson at the Hines and Wilson Law Firm in Columbia. We're right in the middle of the state. We do handle cases all over the state, uh, but we are a very small firm on purpose. It was a father and son and I, and Bob Hines Sr. recently passed away. But Robert Hines Jr. and I are partners, and I've been here ever since, uh, actually before I graduated from law school, I clerked for the firm and it knew it was exactly what I wanted to do and the exact type of practice, uh, only handing, handling injury claims and representing people and not corporations. Scott's trying to say he hasn't been fired like I have. Sure. <laughs> Well, it sounds like all three of you are certainly well established in each of your communities and I'm certain are very familiar for several decades of the laws that have been happening and the changes that occur. So recently there have been some changes in the law here in Missouri. Uh, Mr. Pottinger, could you tell us what does that mean for personal injury victims? How does it impact them? Well, the biggest one, the one actually, I shouldn't say the biggest, but the one that has caught my attention and the one that has affected my practice is now allows insurance companies, if parties enter into a 537065 agreement, long and short, that is just a way for somebody whose insurance companies denied them coverage for them to protect themselves from any sort of judgment. Uh, the law allows them to take, settle, and allows them to protect themselves in the form of a contract, what's called a 537065 agreement. And what that means now with the changes in the law is that an insurance company can deny coverage. And then when the uh, insured makes steps to try to protect themselves because their insurance company has left them hanging, now, the insurance companies, in any subsequent lawsuit, the insurance companies get to intervene and fully participate uh, in any trial, which is ironic because they've already said they have denied coverage and they don't have an interest. So essentially what it allows them to do is get to two bites of the apple. And it really, unfortunately, a lot of the stuff we've been seeing out of the legislature for 10 years, uh, this is a perfect example of it, is protecting insurance companies' interests and not individuals and not policyholders. It's unfortunately just uh, indicative of a larger disturbing trend that we see here in Missouri. Do you, do you really think they get to fully participate? Don't they have a little bit of a, a, little bit of a disadvantage once they intervene? The well, the new they statutes, can intervene, but what can they do? Yeah, right. The new changes fix that. Yeah, the new, the new statute that just went in says that they have the right of full participation as an equal party. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, it just impedes people's inability or ability to protect themselves after their insurance companies dumped them and said, we, we don't have to insure you. 
Okay. Uh, Scott, do you have anything to add to that? I don't. I think it. the new statute means it's going to be harder for injury victims. And so even more important to call an attorney as soon as possible. Uh, these cases get complicated fast when you're dealing with insurance companies. Uh, and even if you're a defendant and your insurance company writes you a letter and says, hey, we are going to represent you, but sort of, uh, you know, defendants need to call call a lawyer too and get a second opinion aside from what the insurance company is telling them as well. So you just mentioned timing, that it was important to call right away. Why does the timing or how does the timing impact the case? Well, in every injury claim, time really is of the essence from the very get go, because I've seen a hundred cases that have gone to gone poorly because the person that was injured waited a little too long to call a lawyer or to ask for help or to just even ask if, you know, everything's going okay. And they assume it is. And the insurance company calls them and it assures them that we're going to take care of this. And sometimes the insurance company even says we, we accept liability and just send us your medical bills. Or in fact, we'll make it easy. We will send you a medical authorization and we'll get all that for you. And we're going to handle it. And we, we admit that our, our driver was at fault. So don't worry about that. And we're going to pay for all the property damage. And then we're going to pay for your medical bills down the road or as they go, or, you know, we'll handle the injury claim too. And it lull, unfortunately that lulls people into a false sense of security and makes them feel like they don't need to call a lawyer yet. And I just want to tell them you, you need to call a lawyer and we will tell you, we'll give you advice. We'll give you free advice uh, as to the status of your claim, as to whether we think you need a lawyer yet and what the next step should be to protect you and your loved ones uh, as the, as the claim goes on. That's the, the Google lawyers, right? They hop on the internet and say, oh, I've got five years, so I'm going to wait. Uh, why should I pay a lawyer? I can wait some time. What, they don't, what folks don't think about when they've been hurt is um, witnesses die or disappear. So now evidence that we need to try the case is gone. And that classic that Scott just mentioned about, oh, we're, our, we're good for it. Well, there's three parts to every injury case. There's negligence, there's damages, and there's a causation, meaning a link between the two, and the, the classic, and I, I won't name any names, but AA, A, A um, <laughs> is really good about accepting liability, and so you think you don't need a lawyer, and their value of your injury is much, much lower uh, than yours. They're not the ones laying awake at night in pain or worrying about how the bills are going to get paid, so their evaluation, what they will offer is rarely um, what I would call fair or reasonable. And, and with most things, there's an app for that. Uh, Spencer, is there an app or on your app, does it impact or can it help people with the timing? When you say help them with the timing, you mean? Help them prepare to reach out to attorneys so they, they feel that they have everything that they need to start with their case. I, you know, I, um, I, I, I shouldn't blame the, the Google lawyers, the those Google law degrees are hard to get, but, uh, and we used to have an app that helped plan some of the evidence, but the problem is you, you don't download a lawyer's app until you need a lawyer. And by then, um, it, it's too late sometimes to collect those things. So, um, the, the best thing to do, um, is to get a lawyer involved early because in 30 years of practice, I'm sure I picked up some things that you're not going to know, uh, the first time you get hurt and while you're dealing with the stress, and so on of all of it. Um, there are folks that settle their cases with, ins with the insurance company directly, for example, and they go to court and there are folks claiming a right to some of the money, maybe a healthcare lien or a, uh, an insurance company, health insurance that wants their money back that may not be entitled to it under Missouri law. But if you don't have a lawyer, there's nobody to protect you. So there's, there's two parts to that. One is 
getting as much money as possible. And insurance industry studies have shown that folks with a lawyer get three to five times more money than those without. So that's part A is getting as much as possible. Part B is putting as much of that money in your pocket as you can. I, uh, Jason and Scott probably agree. I've not had anybody in 30 years say, man, that was awesome. I can't wait to do it again. You know, that was, that was swell. You, usually there's not enough money after you get hurt for all that you've been through. So when someone has an, an injury or an accident and they determine that the right move for them is to hire a personal injury attorney, how much does it cost? From their perspective, you mentioned getting as much money in their pocket as possible, but how much does a personal injury attorney charge? Uh, well, the, the percentages over in my side of the state are different than they are over in Kansas City. Um, but it, it typically, um, the, the standard fee in a workers' compensation matter is 25% of the lump sum. In a personal injury matter, it's uh, typically one third before suit is filed and 40% after suit is filed. Um, plus we pay the expenses and so on. The question being is what does it cost? Uh, what does it cost to ride first class in an airplane versus sitting in the back by the, uh, by the bathroom? You know, the, the, the dollars is not the only measure. It's the quality of what you're getting. You can certainly get somebody off television that's got thousands of clients and won't know your name, but it's a different experience than getting a, a small law firm where you're talking to the lawyer um, that's going to handle your case beginning to end. That certainly would have some value to it. Um, in Kansas City, uh, you, it was mentioned that, uh, Jason, the fees may be different over there. No, that's that's pretty much the standard <clears throat> fee arrangement over here. Um, I, I'm not sure why Spencer wanted to take a dig at me and other people here on the west side of the state. But I, I always get sure barbecue did. when I come over there. I'm sure that's got to be part of the deal. <laughs> you know, and, uh, one, one of the things, too, that uh, I think both Scott and Spencer have touched on is that it, what's really, really important is even before you get to the point where you're you know, having discussions with lawyers about fees and money, the most important thing that you can do, whether you've been hurt or even if you've been in some sort of accident when, when you're at fault and you feel like your insurance company doesn't necessarily have the, your best interests at heart and is talking about things like reservation of rights and denial of coverage, the first most important thing that you should do is reach out and talk to somebody. Because I think that most most lawyers, uh, personal injury lawyers, we typically talk to people all the time and give them good advice and before you even hire us. And we'll talk through issues with you and tell you what you have to think about. And also that sort of dialogue will start you thinking about this person and whether or not you're comfortable with them. How do you interact with them? And so the really most important thing is just get up and call somebody reputable, call somebody that you may be referred to, that somebody has had a relationship with, that is a personal injury lawyer, not somebody who does wills, estates and trusts or, you know, corporate, corporate law. I mean, there's a ton of, there's dabblers out there and that's both, that's a really good way for lawyers to get themselves in a jam and um, most importantly, to get their clients and their cases in a jam. So. Just call. It doesn't cost anything. Have a discussion with somebody, get good advice, and figure out where you want to go next. Make a fully informed decision. As far as getting good advice, so following an injury, what would a client do if an insurance adjuster calls? Are they a source of good advice for them? So in my experience, the insurance adjusters are very well trained They've been through hours and hours and hours of training and they know exactly how to make the injured person feel at ease to assure them that everything that the insurance company is going to do everything that they're supposed to. Um, as, as Spencer noted, sometimes they admit fault over the phone even uh, and they assure them that they've accepted liability for the case. And we're going to pay your damages, nothing to worry about. And here's all you have to do. And so those initial 
phone contacts or even letters from insurance companies are deceiving because they are in an adversarial relationship from the get-go. They're not there to help. That insurance company is not there to overpay on claims. They do not <laughs> pay their shareholders and their uh, stock prices do not go up year after year and their CEO and executive pay <laughs> does not go up year after year by overpaying on claims. So they are trained, very well trained, to underpay claims and to try to take advantage of people that aren't sophisticated insurance adjusters, aren't attorneys. Most of our clients, 90% plus, have never called a lawyer before in their lives and were very nervous in calling a lawyer the first time. And I just want to put people at ease that that initial phone call is not going to cost you anything. You're not hiring attorney just by calling us. Uh, we will talk to you about your claim. We will talk you through it. If we feel that you can handle your claim on your own, if you weren't injured, if it's a property damage, you know, just getting your car paid off or your, you know, property damage taken care of uh, and your car fixed and back on the road, we'll give you the, that advice. We're not going to try to get in a claim that we don't think we can help you on. And I promise you, it's not going to cost you anything up front. It's not going to cost you anything as you go. It's not going to cost you monthly budget as your injury claim goes on. In fact, we're going to try to help you with your medical bills and handle everything, even your lost income, help deal with that as you go through the claim. Um, so I just, I know that people don't like lawyers. I understand it. I get it. I know that most like. people don't want to call a lawyer, but if we can just give them advice instead of getting on the internet and Facebook or whatever it's called today or tomorrow, uh, <laughs> call, a, call a trusted, experienced personal injury attorney to talk before you do anything else. And how much would an injury be worth? Is, are you going to be able to share that with someone that calls as well? Yeah, I, I tell folks, any lawyer that talks to you on the phone for five minutes and tells you what your case is worth is just pulling a number out of the air to get you to come in. I, I see these personal injury calculators online, and when you compare those to actual verdicts, you see that the numbers are hugely different. You know, there's a, it, it, I, I think, I don't know if I'd say it's, I think it's unprofessional to tell you this is the exact value of your claim after a five-minute telephone conversation. Yeah, and, and we always tell people, look, I, I, I'm not going to tell you because I would just be making it up, and I'm not going to do that to you, and I'm not going to get you do, I'm not going to deceive you or pump you full of sunshine to get your business or make something up. Um, you know, I don't know. I haven't seen your medical records. I don't know enough about your medical history. You don't even know what sort of recovery you're going to make. So there's so many variables involved in it that that's uh, that's. And 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 at, I would agree with Spencer. That's an absolute impossibility. Well, and, and the lawyers that do one it one phone conference. Yeah, the lawyers that do it do it on purpose, right? I mean, once they get you in the door, uh, and then when the, sure. the facts come in and the situation changes, that uh, it's they start backpedaling, and as a client, you're hooked. I mean, you either are scared to change to someone else, or are worried about the expense, or you think I've, I'll lose two years of time that I've invested in this if I have to start over. So it sounds like if someone does call an attorney and they give them a figure up front on the phone before seeing medical records, before seeing documentation, that that might be a red flag and to consider calling another attorney. I think, I think that's right. Red flag. Red flag. Red flag. Red flag. We run, we run past those. But, um, I've, I've talked to those potential clients on the phone and they've wanted me to give them a number or even a range and I tell them there is no formula there's nothing in Missouri law or even experience that says two times your medical bills or three times your medical bills or XYZ plus ten thousand dollars 
there's no such thing and any lawyer that tells you that is not experienced in personal injury law and you need to run away quickly um, you know, way on your good leg right i've had those people call me back in six months and sure say, i i got that lawyer that that gave me a number and now here we are um and i also want to caution people that think well let me just see what let me just see what the insurance company offers me first right because i at that point it's it's not too late uh, legally there's a statute of limitations and we can file a lawsuit and get into litigation but once the insurance company has evaluated your claim and you've signed a medical authorization that lets them get all your medical records for your entire life and those insurance adjusters and medical teams have dug into your personal private medical information and they've come up with ridiculous things buried in your medical records that may not even be accurate and they've decided that your claim's only worth X amount of dollars and they offer you that, they've locked in on the insurance bean counter side of the insurance industry. They've locked in to what they valued your claim at based on everything they know and getting them off of that significantly is a lot harder than had you been able to have an experienced personal injury attorney handle your claim from the beginning, shepherd the evidence, get your own medical records without releasing them to the insurance company, giving them what they're entitled to, but not private medical records about things that have nothing to do with your injury and build that case up and prove to the insurance company what your real damages are, things that the insurance company purposely don't even look at, uh, lost income, future loss of earning capacity, the fact that you couldn't take care of your kids and had to hire outside help to work on the farm and had to take care of your spouse, or your spouse had to take care of you. Uh, there are a lot of damages that insurance companies absolutely don't look at by themselves in evaluating the claim initially. So don't wait too long. Don't wait to get that first offer and then say, oh my gosh, this is ridiculously low. Now I want to call a lawyer. I think you're going to be a lot better off if you just call us and ask us and we'll tell you whether we think we can help or we'll give you advice and say, call us back in two months after you see the doctor again. Uh, so don't be afraid to talk to a lawyer, even if you've never talked to a lawyer before, because it will, it can have a big effect on your claim. So if someone is out of work or even if, if they are able to work because they have bills to pay and then the medical, you've talked about medical records, um, as medical bills start to come in, um, an insurance adjuster could say, you know, we'll have it settled and they know there's an amount of money coming. If they don't do that, um, how are those medical bills being paid until a settlement? Jason and I just talked about this yesterday. There's a um, there's a statute in Missouri that allows healthcare providers to uh, file a lien against an injury case, and what that does is guarantee the healthcare provider they're going to get some money uh, at the end of the case. In other words, their interest is protected, and the injury victim can get the treatment that they need um, going forward. It's really tough to convince a jury to give you money for an injury. Uh, if you haven't gotten treatment and COVID has magnified all that for us because a lot of folks are not getting medical treatment, physical therapy, for example, because it's not life saving, but it can be life changing if you don't do that and get the healing that you that you need. The right lawyer. No, I, I don't send anybody to a doctor. I've never done that, but I have a list of doctors that I know will treat on a lean basis and we share that list um, with clients those doctors typically won't see you if you don't have a lawyer. So you're never going to find those lawyers, um, or excuse me, you're never going to find those doctors uh, without somebody who knows what to look for and how to get you there. There's other doctors I would tell my clients to stay away from. I've never picked a doctor, but I've unpicked a few. Well, it well, sounds like, the, I, go ahead, Jason. Sorry. Yeah. I was just going to magnify what Spencer was saying a little bit. Um, about how important, what I always tell clients, you know, when they're 
having problems, but they just keep saying they're, they have problems. And I said, where are you getting treatment? No, no, I'm not getting treatment. And what I tell them is like, look, if, if you need treatment, there's two reasons for you to make sure you get the medical your treatment that you need. One of them, the most important one, is to make sure that you make the best recovery possible, because that's ultimately the aim of medical treatment is to make sure that you do everything you're supposed to do, you follow directions, and you get as well and as much healing as you can. And the other thing is, is, I mean, for the case, if it's not in the medical records, it doesn't happen. You can tell me I was at home and I was had this problem every night or I was doing this and that, but if it's not memorialized, in a medical record, an insurance company is never going to consider it. They're just not. So truth it's only really doubly important. It. That, that's exactly right. I mean, it's not in the records. It didn't happen. Um, so that's why I always try to encourage people even, and, and like Spencer said, COVID has been really challenging in that regard. Uh, but it's really important for people, both for their health and their case, that they get the treatment that they need. Well, this sounds like all fantastic advice in selecting attorney and, and why that's important. But as people call you and are learning about the process, what are some of the most common questions that you hear from people? Or is uh, there a frequently asked question? Yeah. You mean besides how much my, is my case worth? I started to say that's the, that's <laughs> well, the one, right? Well, we already covered that one. So, yes, what? besides that one is, do they ask anything else? Number two is when will I get it, right? Right. How much is it? When will I get it? Um, well, we get the call a uh, lot and say, I don't want to submit my bills to my health insurance because State Farm or AAA or – Liberty Mutual or Geico or Progressive Adjuster told me that they, they're going to pay those bills. And that's absolutely bad legal advice from the enemy. 99.9% .9 of the time, if you have health coverage, you do want to submit and make sure those medical providers, ambulance, ER, physicians, physical therapy, chiropractor, any of that are submitting your bills to your health insurance for payment, even though we know we're going to claim those bills as part of your personal injury claim. And that gets into whether the providers can file liens on your case. That gets into whether your health insurance company can also file a lien on your case. Um, but what you don't want is to think that because that insurance adjuster told you they're going to take care of your bills, uh, just sign this medical release authorization. Um, or even I've seen insurance adjusters pretty unscrupulously and unethically, in my opinion, offer very early on at the very first phone call, offer a settlement value of three thousand or five thousand or ten thousand dollars plus your medical bills for a year or plus your medicals for six months and then they'll send a release and settlement paperwork for that person to sign and that gives that person without a lawyer a false sense that everything's going to be fine and they're going to pay my medical bills and this didn't seem like a bad injury right now. And I, maybe $10,000 would be great to have in the next month or two. Um, there's so many red flags. Um, the, my advice is to 99% of the time, have your health insurance pay your bills. And if your health insurance has a right to get paid back, we'll deal with that. If they don't, then we'll still go after the insurance company for the full amount of your damages, including your medical bills and deductibles and co-pays and any bills that slip through the cracks. Scott, I've got a, a case right now that my client told her doctor to bill her health insurance and the doctor decided to file a lien instead because they get paid more under the lien statute than they do with Blue Cross Blue Shield, for example. So I'm filing a motion, um, to have that lien set aside so it doesn't come out of my client's pocket uh, because the doctor who's supposed to be taking care of my client um, 
the, the doctor decided to look to his own interests and what he could put in his pocket. So um, it, having a lawyer to do that for you is critical. It, it makes a huge difference in this case or could for my client. And, and I guess Ms. Bruckhauser has had enough for today. <laughs> She'll be right back. Yeah, who can blame her? True story. True story. Well, it sounds today like you've shared a lot of great information. If injured, you should call a personal injury attorney right away, um, that you should not expect to hear a value on an injury, um, that if your insurance company sends a representative to speak with you, that you still want to speak with an attorney before signing anything or, or making a settlement. Um, are there any other words of wisdom or pieces, pieces of advice that might console or comfort someone who's been injured? Well, we were, we're just talking about addressing how much money goes in your pocket, making sure these liens, and as Scott said, the health insurance claims are valid. You can't do that yourself uh, if you don't know the law. Um, so having somebody looking out for you also lets you sleep a little better at night, right? When the stress of that's gone, we can often get even co-pays and deductibles to delay to the end of a case 80% of the time anyway. Um, it, folks look at an injury case and part of the fear factor is you don't know what it's worth and no, nobody wants to be taken advantage of, right? You Just like when you go to the car lot, you don't, you don't care what you pay. You just don't want to pay too much or be treated unfairly. And it's the same, um, same with your injury case. Uh, you want to know, you want to be able to sleep at night knowing uh, me and my, this has only happened to me once, um, case is going to get the same treatment because I've got a lawyer who's done it thousands of times. And it was mentioned that COVID has, as with everything, um, has certainly slowed the process or brought some challenges in. Um, are there other challenges that someone may anticipate, uh, for example, do the holidays slow the whole process down? The, ho the holidays. Yeah, when, when, when we're fat from turkey taking a nap, we're not going to return a call, right? So my experience, rarely does an insurance claim be handled by the exact same adjuster from the get-go all the way through the claim. And whether that's, that's interesting. A, whether that's a four month claim or a four year claim, uh, there's so much turnover and insurance companies bump claims up to different levels of adjusters who have different levels of authority, settlement authority for the claim. Uh, often you will never get to that final level of settlement authority if you don't have an attorney. Sometimes you won't get to that final level of settlement authority until you file a lawsuit. Um, sometimes you won't get to it until you have a trial date. Uh, but only experienced attorneys, and oftentimes those aren't the ones advertising on TV or popping up on your Facebook feed or your social media feeds or your Google ads, uh, often those attorneys have never tried a case, sadly. So I, I just need to caution people that they need experienced lawyers, that they'll talk to the lawyer and not the paralegal every single time or the legal assistant every single time or a voicemail um, that will handle their case and will talk to them about the real issues involved and give them real advice and not just blow smoke or promise numbers until the very end and then, oh, sorry, this is all we can get. And at that point, it might be too late for that person. They've made other financial commitments or they realize they owe a lot of bills or their family's out a lot of money and lost income. So we take our cases seriously. We pick and choose our clients, but we are all happy to talk to any injury victim up front for free for no obligation, completely confidential from the get go. And we will give you, a, I promise, an honest assessment of whether you need an attorney right now 
or what advice you should follow until you give us a call back. So, you know, it just happened to us last week. We had a claim. Uh, Scott was talking about changing adjusters. We had a claim. Uh, I told them, as I always do, what's your drop dead number? Whatever it is, you're not going to save any money on my client. Uh, and they they did. The client followed our advice and didn't accept it. Literally a week after we filed the lawsuit, that number came up 800 uh, percent. And it's wow. probably going to settle now. Um I mean, the reason that they throw out these low ball offers is the same reason guys use cheesy lines at cheesy pickup lines. Every now and then they work. And if that happens occasionally, I wasn't even thinking of you guys. But uh, for example, I've heard of those kinds of things happening. Um, I, I do disagree with Scott a little bit about how you find your lawyer. You know, you've got if you don't run in a community where, you know, lawyers, you've got to find somebody somewhere. I think the big difference between the TV lawyers and the folks you see on the Internet um, is is the cost involved? I mean, the the two big budget folks um, that we see all the time, I know for a fact, have um, ten figure marketing plans. And you cannot, if you if you've got ten million dollars or twenty million that you're spending each year on advertising, um, you cannot uh, be choosy about your cases. You cannot afford to take those cases all the way to trial. Um, You've got to get them. If you can get 80 cents on the dollar, it's a it's a great business plan. Uh, a small firm that's advertised on the back of the phone book or um, on the book of faces or Twitter or or whatever, those have kind of. Uh, I mean, I think I put them at least in in a little different category. Um, putting my name on the on the back of a Boy Scout flyer costs something, but there's a there's a break where. Um, it becomes an anchor that you've got to drag around versus something to let folks know where you are. I mean, heck, we have a sign in front of our building. Uh, that's so people, if they need a lawyer and drive by, maybe they'll uh, at least know who we are. The best lawyer in town uh, that you've never heard of is not that not that good, right? You'll never know who they are. Well, and, and Jason mentioned earlier that connecting with an attorney who's been referred to you by a friend or a family member is a great way to identify someone who you feel is reputable or, or that at least there's some history and experience with, but also noted that be certain that it is actually a personal injury attorney and not someone who may be practice corporate law. So that seemed like that was really good information for me. Certainly find someone who, who specializes in injury cases. Any other last words of guidance or recommendations can i can i just throw this out there when you say do your homework i mean there are some sites like avbo and google reviews and other places where you can uh, do some homework before you pick a lawyer even one that's referred to you kind of find out who they are uh, you can look at their website um, reviews from other clients tell you what the client thinks about them and not what their pr person or their ad agency thinks about them, but it is, it's a personal injury, meaning it happened to you. And the best, whatever the best lawyer means is not the best if it's not a good fit for you. So after you've wheedled it down to who's the most qualified, uh, you've got to find someone that's a good fit for you. That's my good words, concern. good words of wisdom. So we talked earlier about the changes in law here in Missouri. So that certainly has caught people's attention. Um, also, we have talked previously um, about the Girardi case that has certainly made at least um, all of the news items as you're buying your local groceries. So I think that that may, um, and for those of, of course who watch um, one of the housewives, but um, as people become aware, um, someone mentioned earlier that people don't like attorneys, seeing that burn victims, widows and children, um, that the money was actually embezzled by their attorney, I'm sure has to be a concern. So what happens to those victims? Do they ever see money? Do you hear of these type things or, or is this an anomaly of some sort? Well, I'd like to think that is an anomaly. I mean, the, the, despite what sort of the conventional wisdom and the jokes about lawyers. Lawyers are very generally very passionate, committed professionals 
who take their ethics and their duties to their clients very, very seriously. And, you know, in every, unfortunately, every profession, you got to, some really bad apples out there. Um, and it's the bad apples are the ones who get all the publicity. And this guy is, you know, there's a special place in hell from somebody who steals from a client or takes money from a widow. Um, and, you know, I'm sure he's going to be and should be disbarred and also prosecuted. So, um, you know, th those people are out there. That's why you need to do your research to make sure that you you understand what somebody's professional reputation and history is. Um, but but those folks, thankfully, are and will remain the an aberration and not not the true character of our profession. And it's my understanding that that um, that embezzling the money is not only a, a, a serious offense, but that it's it's set up with guidelines that are very strict about where money is funneled, and that if someone unfortunately does take a client's money, that that's almost like that's like the biggest offense there is. It almost means you're they're going to be disbarred and you won't be practicing any longer. Like it's, it's hard to confiscate or hard to, hard to hide that. The, the Missouri bar makes all the three of us have trust accounts. And when we receive a settlement check, it's got to go into that trust account before our fees come out and go to our operating account. And to qualify as a trust account, the banks have to make reports. If I overdraw, for example, my trust account, uh, they make a report and within days the office of chief disciplinary counsel has me on the phone it's it's not happened but that's where they where they go with those things if you make an accounting error um that's one thing but um lawyers that take money from their clients in missouri um i, I see those i've seen those disbarments there's not a lot of them um and look as a, as a client you smell that coming i mean the lawyer's not returning your calls the lawyer you smell liquor on their breath when you show up for court with them these are the those things don't happen in a vacuum. These are signs of a bigger problem, usually, in my experience, or my opinion, excuse me, no experience. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure that is comforting information. So again, thank, thank all three of you for really sharing your time, your many years of experience and yeah. expertise that um, I'm certain would help people that have unfortunately been injured recently call an attorney that has practiced and is very experienced and successful um, in personal injury and really get the help that they need as quickly as possible. So, so thank you for joining us.